depression. Number two. And so I was talking previously about how I had my first bank account at age nine. And I mentioned that, that my parents wanted me to learn the value of money. And the thing was, they gave us a little bit of allowance. I don't remember what it was, a little bit. Once a week, I got something like maybe 10 cents or 20 cents or what. I don't even remember what it was. A little bit of money. So the idea of newspaper for me at age nine was to learn the, the value of money, that money requires work. And as I mentioned, my parents went through the Great Depression from 1929, and it was pretty horrible. I grew up on all kinds of horrible stories, how bad it was in the United States. And so I had $25 my father gave me. And the rest of my bank account, every week I would have to deposit some money. Of course, that wasn't a lot of money, obviously, but I would put money in my bank account every week. My parents say, it's your bank account, you must put money in your bank, your bank account every week, part of what you got. So we got paid by the newspaper company to do it. So we had a little bit of money. So I had to deposit money there. Now, all this is because of what my parents went through in Great Depression. So I was basically hearing all these depression stories and how horrible it was. And it was pretty horrible. And it lasted in America from 1929 to basically 1941 when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. That's a city in Hawaii. So I learned how depression was and I learned how to save money. How to save money. You earn money and you don't go and spend it and just blow it and want your parents, give me money, parents, give me money. No, they wouldn't do it. They give me a very small allowance. I don't even remember what it was. It was very small. And I had my own money and it would go and they said, you don't spend that money in your bank account. Now there was a second part to that. I put money in my own bank account and they said, well, you got a job now. Remember, I had a job at starting from age nine. So if you want some stuff that you need, you go and spend the money. So I used to start buying my own clothes, not a lot, but a, a few clothes, like, you know, shirts and pants and shoes basically stuff, shirts, pants, and shoes. And if I wanted to buy something for fun, my parents generally say, no, no, no. You buy the important things first. So I was not only saving money a little bit at a time, I was buying my own clothes from age nine. And that all was because of the Great Depression my parents went through and it was pretty horrible. For example, I mentioned my father was born 1914. In 1918, he graduated from high school. Was that not? No, I've got it wrong. He was 18 years old. In 1932, he graduated from high school at age 13. And when he graduated at age 18 from school, that's being high school senior, graduate, he couldn't find a job. There were no jobs. It was 1932. Depression was still there. And so he eventually went and joined the, the government. The, now, this is important too. You had a president there. President is there in the U.S. for four years at a time. And he can go another eight, another four years. Total is eight years maximum. You had a man that came in in 1932. Remember I said depression started in 1929. So in 1932, you had a new president. Now, this is important. I want you to remember this. This was a man called Franklin Delano Roosevelt, called FDR for short. And he, he came from a very rich family, a very rich family, north of New York. Not in New York City, but north of it. <coughs> New York was a state with a city in, <coughs> in it, New York City. And he became the president. And he was a pretty smart man. Now, he was very smart, but he was also very, very rich, rich family. And he knew that the company needed jobs for men. So what did he do? In 1932, he was elected, took the presidency starting in January 
uh, I think it was January of 1933, and he became president for four years, and he saw, he, like I said, he was a very smart man. He had been a government employee, a bureaucrat. I think he had been uh, in the Navy Department, it's on the secretary, uh, assistant secretary of the Navy. And now, the important point I'm making is he wasn't just rich and stupid. He was rich and smart, and he had graduated from Harvard University. At that time, Harvard University, which is outside Boston, New York, was the number one university in America. Now, at that time, before World War II started for America in 1941, only less than 10% of Americans went to university. We call them colleges, too. But generally, in America, they called them college, inner college. Well, he came from a rich family, and he was at Harvard. And then after Harvard, he went and he joined the federal government. And he became pretty well known. And then he became a politician in the Democratic Party. And he could see that what happened is that what happened is for several years, you had the president, the current president was pretty, he had been very smart. His name was Herbert Hoover. He had been very smart after 1918, and he had been an engineer. And after 1918, that's World War I ended, he had made a lot of money in mining out in California area. But, another but here now, he was very smart in business. So after World War I ended, he went off to Europe to help rebuild Europe. The U.S. government sent him to Europe to help rebuild Europe. And he was very successful. <clears throat> he was very successful in helping Europe after 1918. When I say rebuild, starting uh, industries and jobs for people and stuff like that, he was very successful. But, there's always a but, B-U-T. But then he came back and he became president. And he became very stupid president. Very stupid. So Franklin Roosevelt, FDR, decided he wanted to become president, and he, like I said, he had been in, in the Navy Department, so he became a candidate, and he was elected in 1932. So I'm making a point here. The point is very simple. Being rich is not enough. Being smart is not enough. You have to use your resources. You know how to use resources. So Franklin Roosevelt, 1932, decided that uh, the industry in America is not very good. It was pretty horrible. A lot of men can't find jobs wandering the countries. You go get a lot of movies and see people wandering the, the country. Men, women are home taking care of the kids. And the men are making jobs, you know, call it part-time jobs, and sending money back to their families. And they're wandering around the countries and jumping on trains and just trying desperately to make money. Because at that time, now this is important, at that time you had government and business. They were quite separate. The government did not get involved in business. The government was only involved in government. And this is like I said, the man's name was Herbert Hoover. He was a very good businessman. And so the American government sent him off to Europe to help him set up European industry after World War I. That's after 1918. And he was successful. But, there's a but here, he came back to the United States and became president, and he did not know how to help the United States. So from 1929 to 1932, when my father graduated from high school, the U.S. was in a very bad economic situation, meaning a lot of people didn't have money. The companies didn't have the companies. And you had, listen carefully now, this is important, you had a group of uh, people in New York City called Wall Street. This was the area, name of, this, of, the, of the street was Wall Street. And they were involved in setting up American companies. And in American companies, ordinary people could buy, could buy stock. Stock means you're going to have a little bit of a membership. It was like a document. And they would, sometimes you would make some money. Well, after 19, 1929, the businesses in America started failing. So the people having stock market didn't really matter anymore because the stocks had no value. Now, 
Franklin Roosevelt came in. Now, under the old system, before he became president in 1932, they had a system in America. And the system was after 1918, when World War I ended, that ordinary people could go buy stock. I mean, just small piece of business. And then you'd make a little bit of money off the company. Company would make money, would send money to people that had stock. Not a lot, but a little bit. So this is where Americans itself, Americans became quite stupid. Because in the 1920s, notice I'm talking about 1920s now. In the 1920s, they came back, Americans came back from being soldiers in Europe. And the business was going great. It was going great. And so what happened is they were spending money like crazy and buying all kinds of stuff and doing a lot of stuff that was stupid. Now, I'm interested in history and always been interested in history. And I wondered about, you were so smart in the 1920s and I've seen a lot of movies about it. And how did you become so stupid? Well, because they had a system. And the system at that time, before 1932, when Franklin Roosevelt became president, you could buy stock. And anybody could buy stock. You just would buy it from different companies. Companies would sell it. And then you had the people in Wall Street were taking care of buying and selling and they're making a lot of money. Notice what I just said. The stock market was there and the stockbrokers, that was what they called them, would make a lot of money buying and selling stock. And the companies were making profits because people were working in the companies. Now, when I say companies, I'm talking about a lot of factories. A factory is where you, you make stuff. You had two kinds of work, basically. You had, in, in the city, you had, you had offices and you had factory work. The factories where you had a, a building where they're making all kinds of stuff that they sell to other people. And so the stock... The stock people were making a lot of money because they were buying and selling stock and selling it to normal people. Well, the normal people were got very stupid because you could buy and sell a lot of stuff and you had a lot of money and people were just spending money very stupidly, crazily. This is before 1932. And so what happened then is this, the company started failing. They started failing. Well, why did they start failing? They started failing because they had a bad program at that time. The program was basically this. The stock market people wanted to make a lot of money, so they were saying to people, ordinary citizens, if you buy stock in a company, you only pay 10%. 10% of a purchase price. And then you have 30 days, 30 days to pay the rest of it, 90%. And so people had a lot of money, so they were buying a lot of stock at 10%. And then eventually what happened is the company was having all kinds of problems, selling stuff, they would make stuff, and they couldn't sell it. And then the factories were laying off people saying, go home, you have no job. And so what happened in the Americans had these stock market certificates they bought for 10%. They couldn't pay the rest of it, so they lost it. They lost it. So at that time period, this is still Day Depression before 1932, you had, you had businessmen in the stock market on Wall Street. They were buying and selling stock, and they were rich and having a great life. You can see a lot of movies about this time period. 1920s. Well, what happened is people couldn't buy it and then the companies couldn't have money and the companies started failing and people weren't buying whatever they were manufacturing. And so Roosevelt came in and I repeat again, Roosevelt was not just rich. He had a lot of rich people doing, doing incredibly stupid stuff. Just spending money, blowing money. It's called throwing money away. So he decided he was going to fix the, the country because the president was horrible. Herbert Hoover was good in, war, in Europe, but in the U.S. he was not very good. 
And his idea, Herbert Hoover, the president, said, I'm going to have good meals in the White House, good food, and then you tell people about how the president is having good meals. Of course, that was kind of stupid. So Franklin says, we got to get the people working again in factories. Factories are important. Offices were not very important. But the money was going into the offices. Cut. That's 20 minutes. About.